The one thing that makes the biggest difference for my students speaking English is also the hardest thing to teach and to learn, and that makes it kind of frustrating. But today, we're talking about placement, we're taking it apart, we're going there. Today, I'm working with the student, and you're going to see the tips and tricks that I give her to lower her placement. Now, I've been teaching pronunciation for 12 years, and in the past month, I've learned something that's totally new even to me, and that's another tip to help lower placement. The other night, I was filming a video, and it reminded me of a live class that I taught a couple months ago, and I went bam in my mind. I realized it. No, I wasn't filming it, I was editing it. And as I was right here focusing on the reduction of the word was, I realized reductions help lower placement. So we're gonna see an excerpt from a live class where I started to get it. I'm teaching a woman named Karen, she's Dutch, she has very good English, but we're working on placement and also on reductions. If the word placement is completely new to you, it basically means where in the body the voice vibrates. In American English, we have a low placement, ah, uh, and other languages have a higher placement, often more here, ah, ah, but our core feeling, ah, uh, is lower, and that has to do with the neck and the pitch. You know what, vocal cords, you've heard that term. Yes, yes, yes. Of okay, yes. so we have these two mucousy membranes, the air blows up, they vibrate, and that's what makes uh, the sound. And we can't All change right. that. That's involuntary. But what we can change is like the voice box around it and pushing it forward, pulling it back, lifting it up, lifting it down. <clears throat> and then like that affects the shape of the inside of our neck. And I, other languages, each language has its own specific like neck shape, how we hold our muscles to produce the core sound. And in American English, I think that most students need to focus on opening and lowering, and that changes the shape of the neck in a way that brings the performance down, which makes everything sound placed lower. If you're watching this and you're thinking, I wanna learn more about that, the anatomy of the voice, what can affect placement, check out my video, the number one accent trick. We go so deep on anatomy and placement and something called formance, which can affect the sound. Our vocal cords and our, our voice box, if it starts to lift up or push forward or pull back, which it might when we're mm -hmm. tense or when we're feeling mm -hmm. nervous, that that is gonna negatively impact the overall sound. And for some people, it makes it sound really nasal and high. And for other people, it's more subtle. Like for you, it makes it sound more proper in a way that's a little old fashioned. Again, mm -hmm. not negative, but just sort of different than the way an American would probably present. An American would speak with mm -hmm. a lower pitch and they would have those lower vibrations. Okay, to sound more natural, speaking English, you want lower placement. How do we get that? Tip one is actually lower your pitch. Hi, my name is Karen. Hi, hi, and then try lowering it. Hi, hi. Hi, 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 my name is Karen. You know, and just see with lowering the pitch what that feels like. Probably the lower you go, hi, my name is Karen, hi. You know, obviously you're not gonna speak there, but you should go there in practice to see and sense yeah. what is changing in your throat. And what you'll find the lower you go is that you have to really feel like your throat is getting wide. And that's sort of the feeling that you want even when you're not speaking that low. So you can pretend, you can play with speaking really low to sort of discover what that does to your throat and then try to keep that open feeling as you bring your pitch up to something that's a little bit more natural. One question I get asked a lot is, when I practice, my throat starts to hurt, is that okay? Someone is saying, does it hurt when you lower your pitch? It, it doesn't and it shouldn't, but if it, if it, if it hurts when you lower it really low, that's okay. You're only gonna do it for a second just to feel what that is. But definitely as you play, Karen, do sense strain because strain I think is a sign of a lifting of the voice, voice box. And, mm -hmm. and we want the opposite. We want a lowering opening. So if you ever find, oh, my throat is getting really sore or yeah. my neck or my tongue, 
you know, your tongue, the base of your tongue is attached here to your neck. And if you're ever feeling fatigue, that's a sign that like, okay, stop, take a break, shake it out. So if you're having neck pain, take a break, try to think open and low and relax a little bit. Now, let's start working with Karen on reductions. And I run a business that helps people sell more. Okay, so, and I run a business. Beautiful, but a little bit of that formality. And let's try, well, let's try to reduce that. And I run a business, and I run, and I run. So I'm going to have you bring in that reduction, and I run, and I'm going to have you bring down the pitch, and I run a business. And I run a business. Right. Let's just see what happens if we bring it lower. And I run a business. And I run a business. Right. You know, so you're, the, the one you just did before that sounded pretty good, but the placement still felt high. And then when you brought it yeah. down more, it didn't seem like too much. And then like the feeling was like that sort of American chest feeling. And I run a business. And I run a business. Right. And I run a business. So we're doing a reduction. We're bringing in a reduction that she wasn't doing. And we're also playing with lowering the pitch. Right. And I run a business. Right. And I love that. Like, let's, and I run a business. Like, take it down way lower than you know it should be. And actually, mm -hmm. this is something that will be fun for you to do. Take one phrase like this um, and then record yourself doing all sorts of different things with it. And when you're going back and listening and be like, ah, oh, I love that one. And then, and then play it, imitate it, play it, imitate it, play it, imitate it. And then these are just things that can help unlock that feeling. And, you yeah. know, the thing about the feeling is once we find that, that affects everything that you say ever, you know? So like working on placement can really just transform everything about how you speak. And for, for other people out there who have more varied issues, finding the, a better placement can often help sounds in a way that working on just the sound doesn't even make sense. But working on the core concept of the placement transforms the sound in a way that just working on the sound, you never could have gotten there. And so I, I always right. find that really interesting. And I really, you know, ask my students to do that. So you lower your pitch, your fundamental frequency to find a lower placement. You also relax and open up your neck and throat. And if you want more on that, watch my one accent trick video. Then also bringing in reductions is something that can help with placement. I found for my students thinking about lowering placement and letting go of tension in the neck can be pretty confusing and hard to actually do. But reductions, these are something concrete that you can do instead of saying, and say and instead of saying that say that now if you don't know that much about reductions i have a full playlist that goes over what the reductions are in american english if you're looking to train more check out my academy i have hundreds of audio files to go with each concept that you learn so you're not just learning it with your head but you're training it into your body and of course my academy is also where i have live classes once a month like when i taught karen in this next clip, I'm going to work with Karen on the reduction of the word that. It becomes the with a schwa instead of the a ah vowel and a stop T depending on the sound that comes next. I'm going to say that helps people and then you repeat it back. Okay. That helps people. That helps people. That helps people. That helps people. Okay, so one thing, let's do the reduction. It's not that, but it's the that helps people. Oh, yeah. Okay. That helps people. Right. That helps people. That helps people. Yeah. Loved that. So also for everyone else that's listening and noticing, so she had, and I made her do that reduction. We had that. I made her do that reduction. You guys have probably noticed so many of the reductions involve changing something to the schwa and the schwa has a lower feeling. And so by also taking these words that aren't reduced like to and reducing them to t and this t. kind of thing, we're changing these things to a sound that naturally feels lower too, which will help with the overall placement feeling lower. And it's not something I had really noticed when you were talking, although it makes sense now when I was sensing formality, 
a lack of reductions also creates a sense of formality in sort of an old fashioned way. So yep. that's something, Karen, that you could also do when you record yourself and you're listening to yourself is be listening for, am I doing reductions? Because your rhythm is fine, right? You were saying that, 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 but I actually wanted the, the, the. So that's another thing I would say. I got to say, I was really excited to find this new trick that reductions affect placement. I'm always looking for new tips to give students, especially with something that's as hard to teach and understand as placement. Here's another student that I worked with in that same live class and placement came up again. And here we're talking about it as it relates to a particular vowel, the uh as in butter vowel. And you can only get the right quality for that vowel if you do have a low placement. You know, there's one sound, I wrote only down only one word, but I heard it a couple times that I wanted to tweak with you. And this sound relates to placement so fully and it's the uh as in butter sound. And it was in this word. Bumped. Yeah. Let me hear you say it longer, like holding out the vowel. Bummed. Bummed. Okay, yeah. I actually, I like that a lot. When you said it in the, when you were talking, it was a little bit higher. Bum. Mm -hmm. Bum. I remember bummed. it, yeah. Yeah. Bummed. Mm -hmm. I'm so bummed. Um, that... That's a difference in placement. The thing that makes that sound different is placement. Bummed is a very low placement. Things have to be really open. And if you have a good uh vowel, like it seems like you do when you're imitating and thinking about it, that's a really good core place to go when you're thinking about your placement. Mm -hmm. Uh, bummed. I'm really bummed. And then as you do it and you build a sentence on it, you try to maintain that connection, that feeling. Let me hear you say, uh. Uh, right. Uh, do it again. Uh, yeah, I like it at the end. It, the quality changes a little bit. Let me see if I can imitate it. Uh, I don't think I really did. Uh, 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 so it seemed, felt to me like at the end, it was a little bit more like, uh, instead of, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, do you hear a difference? Yeah, I hear it. The one is like, it's like um, there's this really deep lagoon or something. Uh, mm -hmm. And the other one, it's much more <clears throat> shallow. And the one that we want is the deep lagoon. We want the feeling that there's a lot of space down here, not that it's shallow or gets cut off. Uh, uh, butter, bummed. There's this really deep lagoon or something. Uh, mm -hmm. And the other one, it's much more <clears throat> shallow. Uh, bummed. Bummed. Right. Bummer. Bummer. Okay. Ba. 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 Right. The, that was a lot more. Ba. Ba. Bummer. Right. That was right. That was a lot better. Did everyone hear that? The difference between ba which is just really shallow. It's really narrow. Mm -hmm. bah. Like we're opening up everything underneath it. I worked with some students and I imitated them. And basically every time I imitated them, what I felt was a compression of where the sound lived. It was here instead of here, or even really more like that. Um, so yeah, I think that's something to think about. And you know, that's a feeling that we can still have variation of pitch with that. So we might use a low pitch to find that feeling, or you might use that vowel to find that feeling. But then once you've found that, you can do a lot with it and still maintain that feeling. You can even shout, you can even be angry, and it still feels that connection. <laughs> I'm not angry at you. My friend who's living upstairs is probably like, what is going on in her class right now? Um, but that's what I would say. And that sort of goes to that other question is finding your thing. I think for you, finding that uh, could be what helps. So it could be a vowel or for other people, it could be a particular word that has that vowel or whatever, or it could be playing with pitch uh, until you find something. And then 
you know, as you're practicing with a soundboard, go back to that between each sentence, even, you know, you're like, Hey, what are you doing today? Uh, Hey, what are you doing today? Or whatever. Mm -hmm. Find your core. That's awesome. I also had thought when you were speaking, I had also thought, you know, placement, it feels very cheeky mm -hmm. rather than chesty. So now I'm going to ask her to speak her own native language so I can compare the placement of that to American English. Listen to how different it is when I imitate her placement and I switch back and forth between that and the American placement. And yeah. that's probably what your native language is like. Can I hear you just speak for a few sec seconds? Tell me where you were born or whatever in your native language. Yeah, it's so different. It's so focused and small here. It has to me that kind of quality. Da, and we have da, 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 da. And that's an example, guys. My pitch was the same. My vowel was the same. Like my articulators were doing the same thing. But it was the shape that changed to make those two different sounds. As you're practicing, if you feel like you find a placement that's lower and sounds more natural and American, what should you do with that? You should come up with words to describe your experience and your feeling. When you find, when you go bummed, bah, what would you say is happening in like your neck, throat, chest area? I feel it's relaxing. Uh-huh. So, I feel it relaxing. Oh, I like that. I feel mm -hmm. it relaxing. Let me ask you then, speak your own native language again and tell me what you feel happening. Mom, I feel in București and I live here for three years. I feel like there's, a, there's something that's constraining. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, everything is not relaxed. I mm -hmm. feel like uh i my muscle contracts my muscles contract in here mm -hmm. and not as much as in, it's so in interesting English. to me that's what you have to do to get the right sound of your native language and for english we have mm -hmm. none of that for american english and so i think that can be really useful for everyone too once you find something that feels like oh this feels right Go back to your native language and see if you can describe what's happening because that's what you have to fight to not do every time you speak American English. And when I say fight, it sounds like tension, but of course the way to not do it is to let go of the tension. I had a student once whose native language was Hindi and I was imitating him. And when I was going back and forth between imitating him and not, it's like I felt, I could almost feel my voice box like bending forward to imitate him and then dropping back to sound like myself. So that's great mm -hmm. that you can identify. It sounds like you identified here and also stuff that was happening here. So that mm -hmm. is awesome. That is your voice in your native language. Totally different, of course, than American English. So I ask her to keep comparing English with her native language. And guess what we get to? Reductions. Let's do something. I want you to say a couple things in your native language and then stop, think, let it all go, and then say something in English. And try to be aware of, I'm using a totally different voice in my body now. Mm -hmm. I'd like to eat. Pretty good. Do another one. Nu vreau să alerg. I have to. Mm. I liked that. I liked I have. Then to the verb, I have to. It sort of brought mm -hmm. it up. I'm sorry, not the verb, but the particle. The, yeah, to, yeah. And you know, that is, a, that is a sound that we actually probably should make a schwa. I have to. And if I you had to. let it stay a schwa, I bet I have to. I bet it would have stayed lower. I have to do that. I have to do that. Right. It's a lot different than I have to, I have to. I have to. I, I have, have to. to. Right? I have to. Yeah, that, that's a big difference. Big difference. And, and when we were working with Karen, she was doing the A vowel in that, which is also has 
a bit of a higher feeling. Mm -hmm. And when we drop that and we switch into schwa, um, what was the word? The, that, that, the, 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 the. Another great tip for you to do as you practice is to speak your native language and then purposely try to speak American English with that placement. And then also try to speak it with an American placement. Try to really establish the difference in the feeling between those two placements. Hopefully you get to the point where speaking American English with the placement of your own native language starts to feel kind of strange and funny. I love that switching. Keep that up. You know, the more you do that, the more you're going to solidify the difference. And then actually a great other thing to bring in is speak your native language and then mm -hmm. bring in your English and try to do it in that native language voice and, and, and identify that as wrong and as unchanged and then do your native language again and then try to do that total American voice. I think that that would be a great, great. way for you to mm -hmm. uncover and play. It's all about play okay. and discovery, you know? I can't do it for you, but I can listen and give you yes. feedback. <laughs> One major tip I want you to know before you go start working on reductions is that simplification goes hand in hand with reductions. So you're gonna be simplifying your mouth movements as a part of reducing words, being able to say them more quickly. Here's that playlist on YouTube of all of the videos that I have on reductions, words that reduce. And if you do sign up for my academy and you went ahead straight there, it's the stress three course. Keep your learning going now with this video. And I really appreciate you being here watching this. I love teaching pronunciation and I learned so much from teaching my students. So massive thank you to my students who are in my academy, who sign up for my life classes, who let me teach them and learn from them. That's it. And thanks so much for using Rachel's English.